Are you thinking about publishing your first book? Or in your mind, are you weighing in the pros and cons of a traditional publishing deal or self-publishing deal? So today, we're gonna to be talking about self-publishing versus a publishing company, how to get published for the first time. Stay tuned. Welcome to Self Publishing with Dale and Kelly. And if you want to publish your message, build your brand, make sure you turn your notifications on after you hit the subscribe button to get all of our latest content. You notice I flipped it around on you today. Without any further ado, though. Today's broadcast is brought to you in part by the Extra Extra Video Membership. Can't get enough of the content about producing and publishing your own books? Then you want to subscribe to the Extra Extra Video Membership. Get exclusive uncut interviews, long lost videos, and videos about how to format your ebooks and paperbacks, and so much more. Head over to selfpublishingwithdale.com slash extra to subscribe today. Join us next Thursday, June 28th at 6 p.m. Eastern Standard Time as we discuss no content books in 2018, Create Space versus KDP Paperback. Well, boy, did you guys see, we're, we're upgrading, we're upgrading. Why should we read our stuff live when we can do this right here? We press a button and it goes. So chat, what are you guys up to today? We're gonna to be talking about self-publishing versus a, a traditional publishing model. And this is gonna be important to newbies as well as veteran publishers, because I'm sure a lot of you kind of think, well, what's gonna work for me in self-publishing versus traditional publishing? And I know that Kelly has got a lot of strong opinions when it comes to this one, so. You I know, don't know about that. I don't know about that. I'm not throwing you on the bus. I'm just trying to dance so I don't yawn. Ah, uh, look at that, everybody. She, she's trying not to yawn on you, so. I am whooped, so, so What's yeah. shaking? We see Mojo is in the house. Ava Fails, extraordinaire virtual assistant. She's hanging out. It's good to see you jump in this week. Red lipstick or red, red, lipatri red lipstick. Uh, Jude the Relactic Introvert. Hey, yo. Good Where you, is everybody? Hopefully they'll come in Everybody's soon. Everyone's going to start to come in. Yeah, make sure you guys drop in some questions, comments, and concerns. Because guess what? Since I've done the sponsor stuff, the spot right there, we're not going to be hanging out too long on that. We're going to hopefully cover some questions, concerns, and comments about anything to do with traditional publishing as well as self-publishing. So uh, in any event, uh, hey, why don't we just jump into it, Kelly? I mean, no better time than now. So right. traditional publishing versus self-publishing look um you know this is this is a uh, an age-old question what exactly is this traditional publishing versus self-publishing no actually it's not even age-old a lot of you know what i'm probably talking about but just so that we can kind of address some of the you know the details between one and the other and what's going to be the best fit for you then we can kind of see exactly where we're going that cool with you? Yeah. All right, I'm gonna cover the things about traditional publishing and then I'm gonna let Kelly handle stuff about self-publishing. So that's what she likes to talk about, baby. So in any event, what is traditional publishing? It refers to the system of getting a book deal. Traditionally speaking, you get an agent, you know, you get that agent to take your manuscript and that manuscript is shopped around to different publishing companies that might fulfill that, whether in brick and mortar stores or internationally speaking, so on and so forth. It could be a large publishing house, it could be a small publishing house. So there's typically that system. Some people skip right over the agents, but those are the unicorns of the business that are able to go right over to the companies. And we're gonna kind of discuss one of those ways that sometimes people just leapfrog right over those. Typically, People are signing a contract to distribute their work, of course, with these traditional publishing models. And then self-publishing is also known as indie publishing. It's all about doing it yourself. You're the publishing house and you can use any resources and platforms that you need to get the job done. Why do you like self-publishing so much, Kelly? Because it's me. It's me. You it's get to do me. it. It's yeah. <laughs> me. I've in my perspective, and I don't think we've ever talked about this. I don't write. Traditional publishing is not gonna want me. And if I'm gonna have a traditional publisher telling me what to do, I'm gonna go get a job. She doesn't function well with it, yeah. You know. Don't go too far, don't go too far. Cause we're gonna cover the pros and cons and hopefully you can expand on that there. Yeah, and I'm, yeah, we'll just talk about the pros and cons. <laughs> yeah, so listen, we gotta have the disclaimer. We are not traditionally published authors, nor do we imply having insider information. However, 
You guys have been on this channel long enough. You've seen me have many expert interviews. Uh, there have been people who have been traditionally published and are now self-publishing. There's some that have been traditionally published. There are some people that have a little bit of both. They traditional publish as well as these. And some of you viewers actually have that type of deal. Listen, we're, we're not experts. We're just people that use the same tool that you guys do. It's called Google. Okay. And so you're able to find some of this information out that way too. So I'm not going to just pretend, you know, that I, I'm the guy that knows everything about traditional publishing, you know, um, but I'm able to share at least some of the insights that I've learned from some of the articles and resources that I study, as well as the interviews that I've had with some experts. So exactly what are the advantages and disadvantages of each? That's what we're going to discuss here. And you know, the pros of traditional publishing, folks, it's validation. You know, it's not easy or otherwise everybody would be traditionally published in this day and age. You got to go get that agent. And here's the thing is, there are some agents that will take anybody. They're like, hey, you breathing? I'll go ahead and take that manuscript. That's probably not the agent you want. Most times agents will vet out people based on the content that they have, based on the following that they may have, uh, based on what they're able to produce. And then you're able to get that publishing house deal uh, as long as you agree to the terms and then you've made the grade. So, um, but here's the thing though, is they have print distribution to brick and mortar stores. This is probably one of the easiest and pa uh, one of the passive least resistance to getting into those brick and mortar stores. And we'll discuss exactly how it's a little bit tougher for us in self-publishing a little bit here. And Kelly will cover that. Raw dog. Yeah, it's... it's uh, I already said it. She already she already said it. Uh, <laughs> so there's no upfront costs. And here's the cool thing. Some deals actually will give you advances. And those advances, though, if you ever hear the word advances, that means that's kind of like their way of saying, here, here's your royalties up front. Some of those deals mean that if you fall short of those royalties, guess what you're going to be doing? paying back a large publishing house their advances. And I've heard those nightmares before. But here's the really cool thing. You're in a publishing deal. You're going to have, you know, established pros. You're going to have editors on hand. There's going to be people that are going to make sure that your manuscript is squeaky clean and ready to hit the market. But for all of those really cool features, folks, you got cons to it. And that is low royalties. Let's just face it. Um, we're going to say it in a minute, spoiler alert, but you get larger royalties over through self-publishing. On traditional publishing, there are a lot of middlemen. You know, a lot of people are going to be collecting from your hard work. Remember that when you're kind of saying to yourself, but I want a traditional publishing deal. And here's the deal. It is a slow process because they want to make sure your manuscript is up to snuff. It represents their company, not just your brand, but it represents their company. So they want to make sure that stuff is good to go. And here's, here's the other thing. Stifle creativity and control. It's just not your baby, Kelly. It's everyone's baby. Yeah. It's their baby too. You're contractually obligated and you're at their mercy. So once when you sign on that dotted line, whatever you've agreed to, Okay, that means that you've kind of gone into a marriage, for lack of better terms, uh, and probably even more, you know, more so than a marriage. I mean, yes. Hello, yeah. I am signing my name. You can take my work. You can tell me how to write. Yada yada. Yep, exactly. And <laughs> there's this big misconception about marketing and promotion. A lot of people think if I get a traditional publishing deal. I'm going to get marketed and promoted. I don't need to worry about a thing. Now, there are exceptions to this rule, but if you're a newbie or you're not really an established author, then you are going to be left to your own devices. In fact, uh, I know that traditionally published author John Celestri, a legendary uh, animator and cartoon artist, I, I had uh, interviewed him on this channel. He was traditionally published as well. And when I asked him, I'm like, did they market and promote your stuff? And he's like, no, he pretty much, he was left to his own devices. And I'm like, that's crazy. You're, pub you're, you're signed to a publishing deal, but you still got to do your marketing promotion. Like I said, there might be some exceptions to this little deal here. So with that being said, that's traditional publishing pros and cons. Kelly, I, got, I know you got my back on this one. You got a hundred percent creative control. It is so much faster. I mean, you could write a book, put it up on Amazon or whatever platform you want. Y'all yeah. knows how it goes. Yeah. It's quick. 
Uh, much higher royalties mm-hmm. per, per book. Um, Do you like higher royalties or lower royalties? Hmm, higher. <laughs> um, you're right, and you have the choice of distribution. If you don't want to do Amazon, you don't got to do Amazon. And then I'll let you take that last bullet point. And here's the really cool thing is, there are many indie author success stories out there. How many people, raise your hands up here. Say something within the chat. If you're watching this in the replay, I hold you to it. You probably know somebody else as well. But here are the popular ones. People that have been independently producing their content, like E.L. James, Fifty Shades of Grey, Hugh Howey, I mean, the breakout success story for indie authors, Andy Weir, I mean, he had a movie, for crying out loud, put out with Matt Damon. Call me crazy, Matt Damon is acting in one of my fictional stories, I'm stoked. So those are some of the indie author success stories where they're able to parlay their experience within the indie author community over into larger traditionally published deals. Oh yeah, I know a coloring book person who did the same thing, Sasha O'Hara. I can't say the title on air because YouTube won't like us. Oh. <laughs> um, but she was the same thing. So it's not just writers, it's also um, no or low content books. Yeah. So, uh, yeah, anybody else, uh, I definitely would love to hear if any other indie author success stories that happen to be me- mentioning. Um, you know, you've got the backwards ones where they were traditionally published that went down. So one of my big favorites and uh, someone I follow, and if you're not following him right now, you need to do so right now, Mark Dawson of Self-Publishing Formula. Uh, he was a traditionally published author that is now just killing it as an indie author. Um, but that was backwards though. Uh, so in any event, here's the, uh, here's the cons of self-publishing given to me, Kelly. The stigma. What exactly is the stigma? I guess for self-publishers, they're not as good. Right. It's, it's kind of viewed as, it's kind of made like Like, a laughing stock. Like Like, I've self-published my book. Anyone can do it. Um, you're all on your own. Mm. Y'all, y'all know hiring a VA helped, but if you don't have the money for a VA, you got to find somewhere else to get your editing and all that stuff done. And that brings up a good point. I mean, it, some people just can't afford it. Yeah. I mean, all expenses go through you. Um, it might be difficult if you want to get into stores, it's hard to get mm. print distribution. Absolutely. And if this is your only income, and we know from experience <laughs> all too well it it can kind of stink and be really hard starting out not impossible near impossible but um yeah it can be hard and very defeating at first yeah and this is what i always try to recommend to people yeah get into self-publishing become an indie author it's great uh you can at least express yourself creatively and get rewarded for it uh but you know um I would say start it out as a plan B. Don't do what I did. I burned the boats. I quit my day job and I jumped right into self-publishing. And there were some hard times. Thank goodness I had a nest egg that we were able to burn through and then eventually just it, it got even rougher. So that's just really what, what, it, what it is. If you anticipate that you're going to be able to publish something and then all of a sudden make a big hit, uh, I got news for you, Jack. Okay, and hopefully, uh, how many of you are watching right now? How many of you are struggling as indie authors? How many of you would agree with that point? Um, I know that Kelly would say that's that's probably a good point, right? What? It's not easy. It's not easy. Uh, nothing's easy that's worthwhile. Exactly. And as long as you like it. Me, I hated it. Yeah, it, it, it was it <laughs> well, was really Well, hated rough. writing, but. Yeah. Uh, boy, we're burning through a lot of these points. Folks, we definitely, what do you prefer? What? What is it in a perfect world, traditional publishing or self-publishing? Would you pass on a traditional publishing deal if, if someone offered it to you, Kelly? Like if they stepped up and they said, all right, Kelly, six figures per year, we're gonna get you to produce one book, um, make it happen. No, you can you can keep on walking. Really? Okay. Yeah. What do you folks think? So uh, what if that deal got presented to you or something even better? I, I'm open to speculation here. Um, are you happy being an indie author? Uh, drop your thoughts in the comments. I know that there's going to be some newbies that are going to tune in here. And even if you are new, wh- I want to hear what you think. What was your internal process? Because obviously, I'm kind of in a bubble. I've been in this self-publishing bubble for so long. And I know that I lean a lot in favor of self-publishing. But I won't lie. If the right deal presented itself to me as a traditional so publisher, I probably would do it. So for six figures, you'd be a... Possibly. Just, just 
one in front of the six figures, not more than a mm. hundred. Okay, all right. Well, Would it have to be at least like a quarter million? As long as I could be able to still collect the earnings that I have currently on stuff, I, I would be willing to entertain that if it was just one book, if it was just one book. So that's just my thought. Um, but you know, those Do of you that are- the reluctant introverts with me. I would need I would a, pass. I would need at least seven figures to do traditional publishing. Interesting, interesting. For so, sure. Uh, but yeah, let's go ahead, let's take a look inside the chat. We've opened up a lot of time. You guys see that we didn't burn through, through too much. I want you to kind of load up some questions, comments, concerns. I want to hear what you think, traditional publishing or self-publishing. In the meantime, folks. Today's broadcast is brought to you in part by the Extra Extra Video Membership. Can't get enough of the content about producing and publishing your own books? Then you want to subscribe to the Extra Extra Video Membership. Get exclusive uncut interviews, long lost videos, and videos about how to format your eBooks and paperbacks, and so much more. Head over to selfpublishingwithdale.com slash extra to subscribe today. Join us next Thursday, June 28th at 6 p.m. Eastern Standard Time as we discuss no content books in 2018, Create Space versus KDP Paperback. Well, isn't that nice? Just press the button and watch it go. So, all right. So what are, what are some of the people saying inside the chat here? My chat is going way behind. Okay. Oh, this was asked earlier and it has it's perfect for next week. Yeah. Rose Rose, hey guys, what is best? No content books on CreateSpace or KDP? Join us next week yep. and we'll let you know. We've found that uh, the no content uh, videos that we've done recently have been a breakout success. A lot of people have really enjoyed it and I've got a lot of success stories already kind of coming out from those previous two videos. So we're gonna go back to that well. Uh, big shout out, Scott J. Marshall II. That is, of course, our boy, oh, Raw Dog. Um, but uh, we've got to press raw that again. Dog. Look at the, the dog. The dog does the raw dog bark. I just love that. Raw dog. How awesome is that? Sorry, guys. But uh, Scott actually has won himself a free extra, extra, uh, one free month of extra, extra membership over at selfpublishingwithdale.com slash extra for submitting that idea because he wanted to know, hey, what, what, what gives? Create Space or KDP Print? Uh, so what are some other things? What are some so, people's opinions about traditional publishing versus self-publishing? You might have already known this. I didn't know this. Hmm. Keith Wheeler loves being an indie author. That said, he's currently in negotiations with a traditional publisher for one of his already published books. Attaboy. Um, I think we had discussed it. It was one of, one of his children's books, and uh, it's really good. It's, it's really, like, the art in it is spot on. But uh, definitely keep us updated on that one, Kay Wheeler. And uh, those of you folks that are inside the live chat right now, make sure you go over to Kay Wheeler Books on YouTube. Hit that subscribe on his. He gives a lot of great information. He actually shows some excellent tutorials on setting up and getting children's books put together. Uh, the guy is exemplary in his work, and I don't think he has near enough subscribers for the content that he puts out. Ava Fails said, regarding low content videos doing well, time for a course, Kelly. Hint, hit. Well, <laughs> that's one of the reasons why I'm absolutely exhausted. It's coming out tomorrow at 4 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. Um, it's the beginner's course. I wanted to have the beginners and also behind my screen video available. It's going to be two separate products. It's just going to be the beginner's course. I kind of underestimated how long it was going to take, but I at least wanted to have the beginner's course out tomorrow. Yeah. Um, the intermediate advanced, I don't know if I can even call it a course. It's just meant for those people that know the basics and just want to see behind my screen as to how I do it quickly, my kind of method of operation and can pass by all the uh, beginner stuff. So that's going to be available next week. I don't know what date yet, but by next Friday, the 29th, will be the more intermediate advanced stuff. If you're subscribed to my email newsletter, I'll give you some details this coming Tuesday in the newsletter. I'll give you a link and such uh, so you guys can get more information on that. And make sure to subscribe too because I might include some like discount code. Sweet. There you go. So uh, that's over at uh, youtube.com slash Kelly Publish. Kelly with an I. I was talking about your newsletter. Oh, my newsletter, of course. Yeah. Well, you can subscribe to that as well. <laughs> uh. um, my, my chat's not working well, so I don't think okay. there's any questions before. Awesome. It's lagging. People are just commenting, you know, what they prefer, yeah. self-publishing versus um, traditional this is a good point. Ava Fails, uh, thanks for, for bringing this up. There's something that's called vanity presses. And vanity presses are essentially these paper per press. So like for instance, um, you go over and you just 
want to publish, say, X amount, like a bulk of books, they're not going to distribute it for you. Um, and then there's also these publishing houses, and they're essentially self-publishers masquerading as publishing houses that fulfill print runs for you. Um, and what they'll do is they'll upload over Amazon KDP, they'll do some press releases. I know that, and I'm not gonna dog on these folks, but um, two books right here you guys can see behind me. Uh, Terry Bryant, my boy, uh, he watches this, which by the way, hey, what's up, Terry? Um, Terry actually had done a deal with Page Publishing, and Page Publishing is essentially like that, where they essentially seem like they're a publishing house, but they're, they're not. Um, you have to pay X amount of dollars for them to take care of the stuff for you and upload it. And for those of you that don't want to worry about learning the full system, those, those things can be helpful to you. Uh, but to a certain extent, if you know of, you want to make sure you do your due diligence. Uh, there's some other ones. I think there's one up in Michigan. I'm forgetting the name of it. And help me out, folks, if you remember I, I the name of the one in Michigan. Uh, but... Yeah, there, there is uh, page publishing, and I'm trying to think, because uh, Brock Reiser had mentioned one of them, and it's slipping my mind right now. But uh, be very careful. Uh, those people that, there's even, I've even had this to where it's just like, hey, I'm so-and-so from such-and-such -such publishing house. You'll get like an email, and I want to feature your book on our publishing house, and we're going to give you X amount of, listen, guys, I know a guy over in Nigeria. He's a prince, and he just wants to wire you some money, by the way. And he's going to do it through your PayPal. It's totally legit. Uh, listen, be, be careful about that. If somebody's, you know, sending you emails saying that they're a traditionally published author, I highly doubt Penguin House or random uh, publishing house are, are reaching out to people via email telling them, yeah. we're going to get you a deal. The lady writes, says she loves self-publishing. It was the best choice she ever made. Yeah. Did you ever have to make a choice or is that just a career choice that you like yeah um there was something else i was gonna say uh yeah uh, monique cut down to four days at work that's cool congrats that's good for you i know you've been working your tail off um uh, monique good good work mojo tiana marie writes um comment slash question is amazed at the quality of some traditionally published books these days it's like where were the editors um, yep. I agree. I read a really fam not I don't know, really famous, a really cool dude's book, and I was surprised that it wasn't edited better. Yeah. Actually, two, two cool peoples lately. You spend long enough time in this business, you're going to start to notice uh, small discrepancies in some of the traditional published books. So like Stephen King's book, uh, Mr. Mercedes, it was riddled with errors. I found tons of errors as I was going through it. Now, they might have done an updated edition and fixed those things since, but I read it when it first come out and I was like, come on, Steven, buddy. Like, what's going on here? Your editors fell asleep at the wheel? Uh, Corey Burns just wants to quit um, day job, whichever gets me there. Yeah. Good, good luck with that. Make sure you enjoy what you do or if you quit your day job and you still hate your side hustle, uh, you might get back at a day job. If you quit yeah. your day job but hated writing... I mean, do you think you'd ever see yourself back in a day job? I probably would, yeah. If I if I didn't like the, the process of writing, um, I I probably would be, be still in a day job. Which, you know, I, I enjoyed my job for what it's worth. So, you know, if you're detesting your day job, hopefully that compels you to work harder in your business and getting it to where this plan B becomes your plan A. Uh, but make sure that you're, you're setting up a good strategy. This was something I, I heard uh, mentioned on... A, another YouTuber's uh, channel where he was mentioning there's a difference between strategies and tactics. Tactics will get you these short wins where strategies is an actual plan that you implement over the long term to get yourself better success. Um, but yeah, Corey, you know, bravo to you, which by the way, Corey Burns just released Hick Lawyer not too long ago. So you guys go check, take a look at it. Um, I've tweeted it out actually before. So it's good to see you pop on in here. Avis Fails say, says, do we need to sign up for your list, Kelly? If you want, um, <laughs> I she's mean, no pressure here, folks. She's not going to be selling um, anything. <laughs> my list is pretty much just telling people when I upload YouTube videos. And if I have something special to say, um, when I upload those videos, I do. Um, I will be dropping a coupon code to all my email list subscribers and I'll give one to him too. So that is a benefit. I will reward people who sign up, but 
I keep it so low sales and pressure, so it's not like I'm going to hunt you down if you don't want to sign up. Right. Um, yeah. The lady writes, I, I've i gotten you really excited about low content books. Cool. It's, good. it, it's, it's a good. really awesome business. Yeah. So, and I, I will say lots of people are getting into it. It's nowhere near flooded, but um, if you're interested, start now. Yeah, yeah, for sure. Um, she uh, even further went on to say, this is uh, Katrina, by the way. Katrina actually has a, a YouTube channel. She just started a uh, video challenge, upload challenge. So she uh, got, I, I think she, we hopefully put a little bit of a lighter underneath her rear end and uh, after our YouTube episode that we had this past week. And uh, she's started to upload some of her videos. So awesome work, Katrina. It's great to see you kind of getting into things. But she said when she started writing, uh, she had a few agents who connect with her via Twitter and were asking to submit her first book to them. And she never bothered. She self-published since day one. So, interesting. Yeah. Uh, you know, it's, it's agents, you know, it's going to be a little harder to know who who's who and who's going to be the real deal and such. So that's, you know, anytime agents, publishing houses, things like that, make sure that you're doing your due diligence, do your research, make sure that you're not handing your your property, your intellectual property over to somebody else without knowing that they're on the up and up because you just never know. So there can be somebody just, I mean, you see that, go over to Twitter, just look up, it's a complete dumpster fire right now um, between indie authors with a lot of scams that are kind of coming to the forefront. And uh, it's, it's kind of a scary thing. So you want to make sure that you're very, very careful. And you're not handing off your work to somebody that's just going to go take it, upload to KDP without your knowledge. And then all of a sudden they're saying, well, I own the rights to this. You know, it's, yeah. you gave it to me. I mean, it just depends on what you like. Some people might just like writing and don't want to do anything else. So that might work great for them. Mm -hmm. I don't see how it would work great, but there's something for everyone, I guess. Yeah. Um, Raw Dog says... <laughs> I don't like the idea of surrendering control to a traditional publisher. It feels like it defeats the purpose of working for yourself. So Agreed. So, I agree, too. Well, this has been a fantastic uh, live stream. We definitely appreciate you guys I popping like in this week. I like the longer Q&A. It's been kind of fun. Yeah, yeah. So anticipate, folks, we're going to start to kind of do this. I know that there was a couple people that have complained. They were like, get to the point. Well, you're going to get to get to the point. So that way we're able to get a little bit of time afterwards and we're able to sit and chat. Uh, remember, if you can kind of come in 15 minutes to the hour every Thursday, we're going to be in that live chat. We're going to kind of jib-jab with you as long as I'm not panicking about my PC having to restart. I'll be jib-jabbing. <laughs> he deals with all that. Yeah, so, and hey, actually, we're going to be changing our set here pretty soon. Yeah. Um, so you guys are only going to see this two more weeks before we change into a new set. We're going to get a new home, and it's it's going to be a lot of fun, so we're, we're definitely looking forward to that. Uh, make sure that you guys join us this next week. So in the meantime, if you enjoyed this video, make sure that you like, subscribe, turn on the bell notifications, and leave us a comment. You know it. Till later, this has been Self Publishing with Dale and Kelly, and we'll see you next Thursday.